I'm very much in the decluttering mode, so if you are guys not here for the makeup, feel free to skip this video. This is for the makeup junkies like just like I am. I really wanted to share my journey when it comes the last 10 years in makeup that I've spent. shelves here is where my makeup collection is stored actually not only we are going to go topic by topic sort of the type of product uh, by type of product but I'm also gonna change the way I store my makeup and I'm gonna show you before and after now we're going toward eyeshadows this is gonna be interesting I've done a lot of work to pare down things that I own already and at first I thought there was like nothing else I could really get rid of uh, but after looking more intently into this little pile i feel there is there is room for improvement and i'm also i'm especially i'm especially keen on um freeing space here because i'm planning to buy mm, between five to ten new palettes so we're gonna make sure those new babies have a, a place to go when they arrive fun part palettes everybody likes me some palettes, don't they? Um, my eyeshadow palettes have been decluttered very, very thoroughly through the years, so I actually don't have many that are random and not wanted, but let's take a closer look still. Okay. This is what we have. I used to be a big fan of Bare Minerals eyeshadows, especially those like quads and eighths. Eventually though, one by one, I either gifted them or gave them away. And I'm left with this super universal duo. It's like a, basically a um, brow bone and um, a fairly universal light champagne. It's almost a little bit duochromish with a golden sheen. Uh, not metallic by any standards, this is like an old school formula <laughs> by modern standards. So no glitter, no metallic mm, flex or duochrome, but it's just like a, this is a very easy to use and very universal shade. The problem is I never use them because they're in this disgusting packaging. You see like that's what I was talking about, eventually it gets sticky. It's disgusting so I either have to depot them or give them away and you can decide what to do I would like if I were you I would depot it because I hate the packaging but I love the shadows you know I have similar shades I'm gonna give it away the the shadow quality is supreme though this one is really great to travel with uh, but to be honest, what is it? The modern icon. It has this very mid-tone wearable pale shades. I'm afraid it will look too ashy on more golden skin tones, but if you're pale like me, if you have like pinkish kind of reddish skin tone, oh, it looks so elegant. Um, I love it, but I'm also kind of a little bit bored <laughs> of it. I've had it for such a long time and used and abused it and took it to different trips. Oh my god, it goes so well with my manicure. Um, this is a maybe. Let me put it aside and see how it uh, fares in comparison. This is a truly ideal travel palette. It has everything I could ever dream for. This was a limited edition by Bare Minerals. I'm definitely keeping this uh, this palette it's beautiful the gold this is almost slightly duochrome taupey um, it's kind of violet with peach shimmer this brown with silver teeny tiny specks of glitter this neutral sort of dirty taupey color beige and more cool tone shimmer oh Everything is just perfect about this for travel. It looks like a boring ass palette, but it's ideal. It's it's perfect for travel. It's perfect as a complementary palette to any other color palettes as well. And I like that it has decent blush and bronzer shades. I don't love them, but they do come handy. So that's definitely a keep. Let's compare. Do we have anything 
here. Maybe these two colors. But otherwise though, no, not yet. No replacement yet. Okay, one is definitely staying. This I love. These are the most beautiful metallic shades. They swatch like heaven. Oh, this is, this is everything. Tarte recently issued pods with these shades. Oh, I think there was like new trios. They were kind of like ridiculously expensive. But this is a supreme metallic formula. Just supreme. They mostly work uh, with, with fingers though. If you really want to let that metallic shine come through, you should use your fingers. Love them. Definitely keeping this palette and look how beautiful it is. One of the best packagings I've observed from Tarte. The big Lorac Pro Mega Pro 4. Emily Noel made a video about this when it came out and she said that it really inspired her to use her makeup collection in the new ways to construct new looks and I absolutely agree with that. Again, I feel that if you're pale, you can use about 90% of that palette. I almost have no use for these super darks because they all look muddy and dark on me, but all of the subtle, dirty and pastel shades work beautifully. I love Lorac eyeshadow formula. To in my personal taste, it's better than Huda, it's better than Natasha Denona, it's better than many other much overhyped formulas. So I'm definitely keeping this palette. I'm just warning you that if you're warmer uh, skin tone complexion, some of these shades, at least half of this palette, might just look too ashy and like look like, I don't know, dust in a way on you. But for me, for example, the other problem arises that like these shades, with maybe the exception of this one, they just look too dark and just dark and muddy. But the rest of it I absolutely love. I'm definitely, it's one of my favorite palettes in all of my collection. It's proven to be so useful in so many eye makeup looks. Love it, love it, love it. Keeping it. This is my kind of Z palette style. Um, most of this stuff is in Glot. This is the Potted Holiday um, Too Faced palette. This, this and that. This is the Potted the old school box palettes from Too Faced. Um, I actually do like that old formula quite a lot. It's beautiful. I think this is one Wet n Wild Creme Brulee shadow. So it looks really boring, right? A lot of these look very similar and I must say I only truly use a few of these. So I'm thinking, especially when it comes to Inglot, I do like their formula. Again, I do find that their mattes are not in any way worse than, again, Huda and others. Um, I don't quite understand actually the hype over the Huda eyeshadows because I find their metallics make the eyes look really, really aged. And their mattes are very hard to blend and they, are all, they all look dirty orange on me. Maybe because it's not designed for my skin tone? I don't know. So what I think I will do, I have this five eyeshadow palette from Inglot that I bought. I'm going to probably put the ones that I don't want in here and include them in the giveaway. Because that will look much neater than give, giving, um, giving away like individual singles. I think I'm ready. This is what I hate about depoting and even single eyeshadows. They're so messy. Even like moving them around gets the place covered, just covered in dust. Ugh. This is why I eventually stopped really playing with my depotted palettes because it's just too messy. Anyway. This is what I decided to let go. But at least if you're interested in participating in the Clutter giveaway, you'll get it like a, a nice pet, like in glove package, right? Because that looks way more legit. I do love these uh, colors. All of this is satin formulas. I think this is a shine formula. All of the other ones are pearl. These are the kinds that I'm using the least and I have some of the hyper, hyper shine metallics that I pop in the inner corner. This is what I mostly use the shimmers for and I guess metallics look a little bit more punchier and better but these satins look great all over the lid. I just kind of stopped wearing that eye look a while ago. I don't, 
there's nothing wrong about it it's just like I bored I got bored with one shadow monochromatic satin look but for if you have very dry lids or if you have aging leads this formula is amazing it's really good so okay this is the palette I'm giving away and this is what I have here and I probably need to condense it somehow well we'll leave it for the for the other day but so far so good decluttered almost a full palette and the last one that I have here is pretty romantics by it cosmetics this is all matte with exception of this color which is kind of like a blending soft satin shade it gives a very very slight sheen no more than that really beautiful for the brow bone these are very sophisticated dirty pastels and they work beautifully if you are more of a rosy kind of cool tone skin tone even like reddish skin tone I think would work well but if you are more of a olive skin tone or orangey or darker skin tone I'm afraid these are really not gonna work well they will look too pale or ashy but for my skin tone this is ideal I could not wish for better mattes as a matter of fact I'm so pale that most of my shadow palettes are too in fact I'm so pale that most of my shadow palettes on the market are too dark for me like this is basically as dark I would go in the crease because they already would look largely black on, on, on my very like pink skin tone so I love this palette for all kinds of matte supportive uh, matte shades that I need for to complement shimmers so it's a complementary palette for me every once in a while I do wear an all matte look and these blend beautiful they build beautiful they're just not the most pigmented and not the brightest eyeshadows but you can clearly see that that's not the intent of the palette either so pretty romantics oh, beautiful palette my favorite mattes you know what I figured out that this is actually enough. I had this smaller palette that I was just hanging around in and I fit all of the shadows that I truly love that are unique to my collection here. And this bigger one, this is basically the older, oh my god, what was it? I think it was Too Faced Smoky Eye. They are so old and I fit a few of them but I can let it go. This is too white. This I do love. This is Creme Brulee by Wet n Wild. But I do have so many shades like that and I would just rather clean it up and maybe get some new and exciting eyeshadows in here when I'm ready, you know, when I know what I want. And in terms of boring ass but super universal palette that like every color is just my color, it's perfect for every occasion, I'll have this one and it's much smaller. Oh my god, I'm so proud of myself. This is so much better. Next are the lipsticks. Let's see what we can do here. Oh my god, I have so much. Way more than I ever actually wanted to have. I'm not really a big liquid lipstick girl. Neither I am on the lip gloss train. So actually lips in general is the category that I like more in theory than in practice. So I'm more than willing to declutter this in half but sometimes I get caught in this notion of having diversity of having so-called options even though some of those options I never really am willing to explore in real life so let's see what we have so let's see with this one I think this one will be easier to do I have three very generous gifts from a lip, a lip, lip slut um, their affiliate gifted me this three PR full-size products they have a pretty let's, let's do it like this they have a pretty uh, standard liquid lipstick formula it's not bad it's like just standard I don't see it being super innovative the innovation factor actually comes from super punchy names that they have for their products and um, the kind of the, the the social activism that they do so in that sense they are young they're they have a bite to their products and if you really if you're really into that if you're if you you know you really like to participate in those social movements this is probably a brand you should really keep a close eye on 
So the ones that I got, I wore probably only once for the Instagram post just to, as a gratitude to generous gifts. So Fuck Havana is, is a dark, actually I'll swatch it for you. It's a very dark cherry red. Um, I, as I told you, I really don't wear liquid lipsticks, so I'm, I'm gonna part with all of three. I'm just gonna swatch it for you, so you know if you are willing to uh, try them. Very lightly used for me, or buy them, buy one for yourself. So next is, oh, this is a long one. Lefty. Oh my God, lip globalist. Antifa Calm. Oh, oh my god. This is gonna make this is gonna take a while to just to read. Here you go. This is a more of a plummy purplish tone. Very vampy punchy colors. And the third one is a sort of everyday nude with uh, a very clear name. This is, I would say, the moosiest of them all. I don't know if it's good or bad, but it seems like it's either dry or more moosey. But since it's sort of an everyday, a rosy, my lips but better color, maybe it's supposed to be a little bit more plush and, and moosey, but this is what they look like. All three I'm including in the, in the declutter giveaway, so if you're really curious about trying them, maybe like sharing some with your friends, you're more than welcome to participate. Here we go. Again, not hard feelings, I just told you, it's just like the lips is not really speaking to me at the moment. They, they never really did, to be honest. All right, so two matte lipsticks from Urban Decay. Um, they already repackaged a lot of their lipsticks, but I kind of got them real cheap when they were doing the whole repackage thing. And very recently I realized I just, I love the colors, but I don't wear them because of the formula. This is this typical, in a way, Kat Von D like formula that you have to press to get it on your lips. It's it's good, but it's still slippery, so if liquid lipsticks dry up and then they, there's no transfer, this color transfers, but it still dries up my lips, just like liquid lipsticks do. Even though I love the color, and this is matte tilt, I would really prefer a more moisturizing formula. So I think I'm gonna let this go. Matte temper is a darker, perfect for fall, this dark, brick terracotta color. Um, again, beautiful color, I love the idea of it, but I'm not the biggest fan of the matte lipstick formula. So I think both of this, yeah, both of this will go and try to find a better home. The next two, um, this is kind of like a brownish red. It's a little bit more wearable closer to an everyday color, but for some reason, I don't know why, it looks really, really brown and blah on my lips. I wish it had a little bit more of a punch, either more red in it or pink or any kind of color. So it's a bit, it's almost too grungy <laughs> for my liking. However, this is Maybelline standard formula. This is Rum Rich. Um, so I think I'm gonna declutter that and do a giveaway. This is my own video, quote unquote, lipstick. This is infamous collection by Maybelline that changed the game. This is 835 Subfire Siren. When I saw Emily Noel show how it worked on her lips, it was like the best coverage, the most opaque, beautiful color. I got, I think I got three from that collection and this is the only one that's actually survived. I love it, I never wear it in real life, only for the videos. But for that particular purpose, it's a, it's a great color. It's in a great performance as well. So I'm gonna keep that, actually. 
every once in a while I do enjoy an editorial look in my videos. And another one of very similar with very very similar narrative is a teal color, metallic teal by Essence. They have a whole line of metallic lipsticks. Metal Shock 06. It's a bit of a standard kind of waxy formula, but the effect is quite good. I have, let's see, I have three. Three from this line. Let's just look at all of them together. I'm definitely keeping all three. I love, I love it. Even though the formula kind of reminds me of old days in lipstick, uh, but it still performs well. They are glossy, they stay well. This metallic kind of rose, it's not rose gold, it's actually pale rose. It looks gorgeous and makes my lips very voluptuous. This is 01. They don't really have names, just numbers. And this rich raspberry pinky red metallic. Ah, oh, so juicy. This is 03. I love them all. All of them are staying. Okay, I looked for any other liquid lipstick or matte lipstick formulas that I have because these are my least favorites. And this, this is getting tough because these are my favorites, but I still never wear them. One of them I got uh, as a PR gift from Octoly, and this is when they, the Maybelline released this formula, the Stupor Stay Matte Inks. Uh, these two colors, I think one I bought, one I got as a PR, these are the best shades in that line. Some of them are still very drying and actually they really, they make, I don't know how to say it politely, uh, they dry up the lips so much that they look like a, a desert. Um, there are colors, even in this line, that I find to be not appealing unless you have a lot of fillers in your lips that can sustain this kind of surface pressure. Uh, but these two are marvelous and they last forever. These two colors are 65 Seductress and 15 Lover. I'm gonna do a swatch for you. Gosh, this is gonna be hard. I want to wear them. I want to like them. But I don't. It's just a matter of fact. But I really do want to like them. You know what? This is a maybe. Let me look through everything else and if by the end of the declutter I have plenty of room for them that actually I will be able to give them a fair chance, then I'll keep them. If I, by the end of the lip uh, product declutter I realize that I have plenty um, in these kind of shades, then, then I'll include them in the giveaway. But I do highly, highly recommend these two shades because they are the ones that still maintain some of that kind of moisture on the lips and they, they last at least 24 hours. The other two that I have, one is a matte lipstick by Maybelline, the infamous formula, but actually the only one lipstick that I actually enjoy wearing in real life is this one. It's sort of a darker, a more of a vampire-y. There's something really noir about this shade. This is 575 Brown Blush. I like it. Every once in a while I do wear it and this is probably almost the only matte lipstick formula that I can tolerate, but still not all shades here are created equal. Uh, bear it in mind. Some of them are very drying. And a normal formula, but it still kind of feels like it's a matte formula. It's very, very dense, um, which I guess for this kind of color is fine. This is Venom by Urban Decay. Super dark, rich. You see like how hard it is to get it on. It's like a very viscous dark berry shade. Given the fact that I got rid of almost all of my dark lipsticks, I'm compelled to keep these purely for editorial and video purposes uh, even though in real life it's very unlikely that I will wear a color that dark because it's very high maintenance. Um, wearing a normal lipstick like that is high maintenance and wearing liquid lipstick like that just kills my lips. You can't win unfortunately with dark colors. 
but I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it for now and see if I wear it for the videos, if I wear it for uh, photo shoots, then uh, maybe it will serve its purpose because that's the only dark lipstick I actually have at the moment. Okay, now we go to my bright, interesting colors and then we'll have more sort of nudes and lip glosses. Here we go. This is a very recent purchase. This is a semi-matte finish by Olme. I love the packaging and I thought, oh, I'm gonna wear this flamingo pink, kind of hot pink color in the summer. I did, but only twice. <laughs> so, um, mm, again, the bright colors, high maintenance. I don't find them easy to wear. I constantly worry about if I touch my lips or if the lip color starts, you know, fading away or sm smudges anywhere but since it's new I'm gonna keep it I'm gonna give it another go before I make a final decision NARS is where I started with luxurious kind of designer lip products and to this day I sort of have a soft spot for NARS lipsticks in my heart but I hate their packaging this kind of packaging oh, it's just the moment you take it out of the box, it starts accumulating grease, dust, and it just doesn't look cute. This color, this kind of gel-like rusty red, you see like it has a gel texture to it. It's called Gypsy, right? Yeah, it's Gypsy. I had it for a while and I love the idea of it but I almost never wear it because I don't like touching it. It's not sticky yet, unfortunately, this kind of uh, resinous um, coating eventually gets sticky. Since it's still salvageable, but I still just don't, I, I don't know, I don't grab it. I only like it in theory. I'm gonna pass it along because it's a very expensive lipstick and I just feel bad about throwing it away. Maybe somebody wants to play with it. If you don't like it, do whatever you want with it. And keep the one that is actually denser color and a little bit more pink. I don't know if you can see it or not. It's just a little bit more of my story, but they're very close. This is Bourjois. I used to have like five lipsticks by them. Let me find another. I have two right now. Amazing lipstick formula. If you're ever in Europe, this is the drugstore kind of European brand that is definitely worth exploring. As you saw, I had quite a few gel eyeliners. Their blushes are good. Uh, some of their foundations are infamous. Some of their mascaras are decent. So it's the lipstick. These ones are really, really good. So I have number five. I'm gonna keep since we're at it. Let's watch the nude. Um, just rosy, pinky nude. Love it, love it, love it. I had them for a while, and I fear that soon. You see, like, <laughs> oh my God, when you throw something in the purse, I don't know about you, but like in my purse, in one week everything starts looking like it's ten years old. Um, I really need to use them up as as soon as I can because I love the formula but these guys they are they don't have much life in them in terms of the expiration date so I really want to clear the space and use them like every day if I can love them absolutely love them the formula everything about this is great now gel formula sort of light formula by urban decay this is sweet sheer Ah, sheer bittersweet this is basically gel lipsticks formula by urban decay this is a rare case of a very cool toned lavenderish pink it's the only color that I have in my collection so every once in a while I do use it and use it with great pleasure so I'm keeping that I tried two Kiko lipsticks I think it's their standard line uh, I think I was uh, traveling in Scotland and just couldn't find anything. I wanted to like some piece of makeup to buy to remember that trip. Um, and somehow just nothing looked good, so I got some Kiko products. They're always decent, at least. So I got two colors that both are kind of like in the My Lips But Better category, a pinkier one and more of a reddish, it's almost 
exactly like my lip color to be honest uh, 406 and 420 406 is almost ex oh, it's actually a little bit lighter than my lip color it actually looks much lighter than the sticker it's a little bit warmer and this one is a little bit cooler tone pink version of it see like they're actually not the same if you thought that I'm keeping dupes I hope you can see here not the same story what I don't like about it that even even though this is plastic it still collects kinds of dust I don't know it just doesn't look cute the plastics feels cheap and light and the lipsticks are too easily turning around um, in their base so all of them are basically now scratching the lids don't like that so the my verdict for Kiko lipsticks they're fine it's nothing special in if if it wasn't for me trying to remember the trip I would never buy them I'm not planning to buy them again they're just okay there's nothing particularly memorable about them and this lipstick by Bobbi Brown that is just a tad boring for me it's very similar to the others I have but this shade just I like this one more because it's cooler I like this one more because it's warmer it just doesn't quite get there it doesn't inspire me for some reason it's just boring to me can't really explain it but the formula I like way way more than the Kiko so this is mod pink uh, 13 and I think I'm gonna include it in the declutter giveaway this is an old formula by Revlon I actually gifted it to my mom that she wore it then she gave it back to me it's kind of like a, a little bit <laughs> dated um, dirty raspberry rosy red with a bit of a satin shimmer this is exactly what my mom absolutely loves and um, I don't know why she parted with it but she gave it back to me and I actually wear it in winter with great pleasure but I must say I think most people will find that this color is pretty boring to me it is a very tasteful raspberry red it's not punchy but it's it's like everyday favorite what is it 485 raspberry freeze I actually like it and the Revlon formula I do enjoy more than the Kiko formula if you if you're choosing between two <laughs> blase standard ballistic formulas I would rather buy Revlon now we're talking about lip colors in the stick formula kind of like pencil formula and lip glosses I can I can see right away that this shimmery almost metallic dirty apricot by Giordana I bought it and probably used once it just doesn't really inspire much of a mood like doesn't really inspire me as a color so I'm willing to part with it this is like a lipstick in the pencil formula a very similar candidate but I love 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 this is this is my kind of uh, matte lipstick don't, don't mind that it's shiny right now when it sets it actually goes through this shiny to satin to almost matte effect and I love it I love it I love I live for this color this is NYX simply nude cream lip cream and the color sable if you can see it here this is my second stick first one I had for I think two years and then it actually got bad gone bad and I bought it again so this definitely stays I love it in the same sort of color story I love this liquid lipstick this is like a shiny one oh, it's so beautiful this is by Laura Mercier and if I could buy all of their color drenched lip glosses I would these are the most nourishing dense shiny liquid lipsticks and they stay shiny oh they're so good they feel so good on the lips this is um cafe au lait color it's on its last leg very soon it probably will turn rancid so i'm i really want to use it up as much as i can 
this is what I thought would be a similar formula by Laura Geller now nude kisses is a to me boring but really nice smelling pale mauvey rose I used it probably once and just never really wanted to use it again it's just boring to me so I'm, I'm willing to part with that now any other beige we have here these two were in some limited edition Revlon collection glow lip oil and they are surprisingly well made these kind of plastic it looks and feels like proper dense acrylic so this is why I bought them I wanted a nourishing lip oil with some tint of color but I really wanted to start buying makeup that I also like to touch that I like to you know like feel it in my hands and this in, in this limited edition actually was fairly well crafted at, le at least the lip oils so the beige that I have from them it's much lighter it's semi-transparent but it's a beautiful everyday color I've been wearing it fairly frequently so I'm keeping that the berry color I didn't like as much I don't know why maybe I need to give it another chance Okay, I'll keep that too. Now, anything berry. This one, Water Kiss by Essence. You can see like how it's kind of this kind of signs of discoloration. It worries me a little bit, but it smells fine. It's very dark, moody. Not very, but medium dark, moody, cool toned mauve I don't know, mauve, I guess. I really like it on the lips, and I do like the formula. These water kisses, they stay semi-satin, and they do moisturize the lips, and they feel very light. So I, I kind of like it. I'm going to keep it. This Clarins gel lipstick is my favorite kind of creamy, almost watermelon milkshake red I used to have probably five colors almost identical to this I think one of them I finally finished one of them went rancid one of them I think I gave away so this is the only creamy poppy milkshake red that I have and I love it definitely keeping Lip Oil by Milani. I have mine in Mango. Oh, such glossy, delicious and good smelling lip gloss. This one serves all the purposes of all lip glosses that I ever need, so I'm keeping that one. The Peach. Too Faced Sweet Peach in the color Popping Peach. Uh, it's a really interesting kind of high fashion apricot orange. I do apply it usually on top of a pinkier, maybe not this one, but maybe something like this, pinkier lipstick because it's just too orange. It looks strange on my lips. I like the formula. I'm just not, I ended up not falling in love with the color, so I'm going to part with it. So this is Too Faced. And this is actually the orange formula that I absolutely love. This is my second one. This is Sephora uh, Glossy Lip Pencil. I think they repackaged them recently, or not so recently. But the mine is just called orange. I don't know if now it has a different color. You see it's a little bit reddish, but I don't know if the camera can show it or not. Despite being mandarin, kind of tangerine, orange slash red, it has cool toned purple shimmer. No, I don't think we're gonna get that in this lighting, so you'll have to kind of believe me. Uh, Sephora sells this vinyl lip lip pencils for I think four dollars these days. Definitely worth checking out if you find a color you like. I love their formula. They make lips really big, really kind of voluptuous and glossy. Um, every time I wear it in a video, a lot of people ask me what is on my lips. So mine is just called the color orange, uh, glossy orange. 
I'm not sure if it since has been repackaged and renamed though, but this Sephora product, it's a rare case when the Sephora brand actually does something that is, I consider to be one of the best in the market. Definitely keeping. So this is an interesting case. This is a iridescent lip gloss that I hoped I would wear on top of liquid lipsticks or matte lipsticks because they dry my lips so much. And you see like it's kind of orange base with cool tone, cool tone, pink, almost fuchsia shimmer. Looks great, but the applicator is so small, it takes me forever to fill my lips with it. So I'm kind of on the fence about it. Okay, I'll keep it for now. Let's see where we are. So I condensed from three to two buckets. I think I'll have to figure out the storage, a better storage option for my lip glosses, but it really works well for lipsticks. I have my more sort of editorial options. I have so many beautiful, amazing everyday options. Oh, this is so great. And this is all that I'm giving away. Awesome. Okay, time for the last one. Here it is. All of the eyeshadow palettes, lip products, uh, my beloved but really, really small at this point, like for me it's nothing, um, eyeliner collection, a few liquid eyeliners, uh, single eyeshadows. It, I really learned something new about my taste when it comes to makeup, which you think like by now I would know everything about me and my habits. No, apparently my favorite glitters are nude and those are the ha I have the most dupes for, logically. So I actually don't need any more glitter of any color because I have perfect glitters for me and I already have way too many of them to wear them all before they dry out. With lip colors, I'm truly ready to revamp, to revamp my lip collection. A lot of these, uh, some of them actually are in my bag right now because I want to go to a store, swatch the ones that I have and swatch newer releases of uh, lip colors because I really, really, really want some new lip shades because a lot of the ones that I've been kind of using up, they're really old at this point. Nevertheless, uh, another thing that I realized, I really want to change uh, all these storage boxes to something way lighter. Uh, basically, I'm just, I, I just use ad hoc little things. This is from like my Skyen uh, watches. The lighter the boxes, the easier it is to see inside and kind of the more uniform it looks. So it's gonna stay like this for now, but with time, I think I will replace all the darker bo boxes with something more, kind of more cheerful and more bright. The eyeshadow collection. Uh, I feel my eyeshadow collection in, in its really perfect minimal shape. I also condensed the bigger sort of departed palette into a smaller one. This is like a perfect complementary palette to any other palette that I have or will buy. I think I will reach for it that much more often now because it's just oh, all of these like soft, smoky, foggy colors, cool, cool tone colors. This is my favorite type of colors to work with. Anyway, this is what it looks like for now. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I also decided that moving eyeshadow palettes to this deeper drawer will serve me well because now if I buy, I don't know, 10 of them, they will all, all fit in here. I'm not really concerned about them, uh, the eyeshadow palettes kind of cluttering each other because when I choose uh, an eyeshadow palette, palette to work with, I usually kind of browse through, then I choose one and pick up the one complementary palette, something like if I need to buff some colors or use a neutral shade, if you know a chosen palette doesn't have it, um, doesn't have neutral colors, I just pull them out and I, I keep them on my table. So I don't really need to be constantly digging into this drawer, so just having them stacked up doesn't bother me at all. One last look. So this is my makeup collection, guys. I'm so happy. It's been a long time coming. I'm finally finishing up my uh, two-year-long 
I wouldn't call, again, can't call it a diet because I didn't force myself to do it. It was kind of like improvised, low buy. Uh, but with this renewed and decluttered collection, with this renewed storage, with me realizing what kind of textures, brands and colors I really love and what kind of new ones I want to try, I am I'm ecstatic to go into this new phase of my beauty life. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions or suggestions or advice in terms of makeup storage or things to try. I would really appreciate your input. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you saw anything that you would like to try yourself, I'll leave a link to my Mercari shop below. Usually when I do these makeup bundles, I just put like pay for shipping kind of price and they, they you know, those bundles <laughs> are gone within an hour at best so just try your luck if if it's still the link is there if something is still available you can snatch it and just get a bunch of um gently used makeup just to play with it if you don't like it throw it away i don't care um it's just you know like i just don't want to things that can can be used again and if somebody wants to use them i would rather you know give them so i'd you pay for shipping and then you try a bunch of new things and I have an opportunity to start over rather than just throwing them away. Like I sometimes buy gently used makeup so if it's not your thing, if it's think it's gross, just don't click on the link. <laughs> but if you are like budget constrained uh, or you know for whatever reason you, you like you know good value for your buck, check it out. Um, let's talk. And let me know if you want to see my makeup haul, if you're interested in that kind of thing. Uh, the primary passion that I have now is still <laughs> remains with perfumes, but I love style and everything and kind of I see all of these aspects of our self-care as, if not equally, but somewhat important for example for me it's really important how my hands look like this is why i have like over 100 nail polishes as well and for me it's very meditative to do my nail my nails every three or four days or so and i even made a few asmr videos actually with how i do my nails if you're curious um if you actually like that kind of content also let me know we might like create a little bit of a series there uh if you like relaxing quiet meditative videos of this kind so we can we can consider that i actually do do like making them those um as well anyway all right enough talking hope you enjoyed the video i'll see you in the next one please subscribe give it a chance mm -hmm.